Hey viewers, this is Dr. Sumit Bakshi. Welcome back to another video on non probability sampling, which is quota sampling. As always, in this video, I will discuss what is quota sampling, its steps, when to use, advantages, and disadvantages. But most importantly, I will discuss how stratified sampling and quota sampling differs. Quota sampling is very much similar to stratified sampling. For details of stratified sampling, click this I button on top right. In quota sampling, data is collected from different homogeneous groups as we do in stratified sampling. It involves three steps. First step is divide the whole population into homogeneous groups which are mutually exclusive. Second step is identify the proportion of each subgroup in the population and then calculate sample size from each subgroup. And the third step is select samples from each subgroup. Let me explain these steps through an example. Example is comparison of eating habits of girls and boys in a school. Let's assume population is 1000. It means there are 1000 students in total out of which 700 are girls and 300 are boys. As a researcher, if I want to collect data from 100 students, that means my sample size would be 100. Now, we have two homogeneous mutually exclusive subgroups based on gender, which is girls and boys. These are two mutually exclusive subgroups which are homogeneous. This is first step of quota sampling. Second step is we need to identify the proportion of each subgroup, which is 700 girls and 300 boys. Now, I need to calculate sample size from each subgroup. For this, we will use same technique which we used in stratified random sampling. In stratified random sampling, we use the formula sample size from strata is equal to sample size divided by population size multiplied by strata size. In the same way, we will use same formula here to calculate sample from each subgroup. Let's say if I want to calculate sample from girls, I need to use the same formula, sample size, sample size is here, 100 divided by population size, multiply by subgroup size. Here I'm talking about girls, so my subgroup size will be 700 is equal to 70. In the same way, I can calculate for boys. For boys, my sample size would be again same 100 divided by population size 1000 and in this case, subgroup size is 300. So, multiply by 300. It come out as 30. This is second step of quota sampling. Now, we know we need 70 girls and 30 boys as a sample. Stratified and quota sampling differs in third step. First two steps are common in both. Now we have sample size of each subgroup, means 70 girls and 30 boys. In stratified random sampling, simple random sampling or systematic random sampling is used to draw sample from population. These are probability sampling techniques and give better result in terms of sample representation to population due to random selection. But if for any reason researcher is unable to use simple random sampling or systematic random sampling, researcher can go for convenience sampling or judgment sampling. In that case, it will be called quota sampling. It means first two steps are same for both. In third step, if researcher uses simple random sampling and systematic random sampling, then it will be stratified random sampling. Or if researcher uses convenient sampling or judgment sampling in third step, then it will be called as quota sampling. Now, when do we use quota sampling? We use quota sampling when population is heterogeneous and can be divided into mutually exclusive homogeneous groups, as we did in this case, girls and boys. Again, when we cannot draw sample from population using stratified random sampling. Researchers should go for probability sampling. That means simple random sampling or systematic random sampling in third step, if possible. If it is not possible for any reason, 
then a surgeon can use convenience sampling or judgment sampling that means if research it is not possible for researcher to use stratified random sampling then researcher use quota sampling as quota sampling is mixture of stratified and non probability sampling it will have advantages and disadvantages of both let's talk about advantages first as we have divided whole population into mutually exclusive subgroups quota sampling is more precise than convenient sampling it is supposed to give reliable results even with small samples in comparison to convenient sampling we can interpret our results on different subgroups too as we have sufficient sample size of different subgroups it will have similar disadvantages of convenience sampling or judgment sampling due to non randomness let's talk about disadvantages quota sampling does not always ensure a true representative sample out of the population due to use of convenience or judgment sampling of selection this method is considered as unreliable method because samples are not obtained in scientific way as we do in probability sampling techniques selection of samples can be biased due to non randomness it takes more efforts on the part of researcher it cannot be used with every population because every population cannot be divided into mutually exclusive sub populations analysis of data can be little complex due to various subgroups it can lead to inaccurate results sometimes if researcher mistakenly put one individual into more than one sub population that's all thank you please press like button and subscribe to dr sumit bakshi if you like the video and don't forget to share with your peers if you find it worth you can follow me on facebook and connect with me on linkedin links i have given in the description box below thank you